Hello everyone, this is Lolly, and today I want to work on um, finishing the cover of this Moleskine notebook. And you'll notice it's very flexible. I got a stack of these really affordably at Costco. Now if you don't have that, don't have any access to them, these always work too, these composition books. I got this for a dollar, so that's a really good deal too. So I want my cover to be stiff, and so what I'm going to do is I took some really hard, hard chipboard. I cut it down to size with a metal ruler and a craft blade, and, um, oops, excuse me, like this, and um, I made it so it would be smaller than the cover. I want it to look like it's being framed there, so this is what I'm going to do. I've covered my craft mat with um, freezer paper, shiny side up, and I'm going to use some matte gel. And I think what I want to do to protect the um, the pages of this in case I get sloppy is you could put another pa uh, sheet of freezer paper down, or I'm going to use this vinyl by the sheet here. There we go. I'll do that to protect that from the pages as I go. Okay, again, I'm just going to paint the inside, the back side of this generously and make sure I get it all done. You'll notice that I have the corner chomped there. I used the We Are Memory Keeper corner chomper, which is strong enough to get through heavy chipboard and it's, uh, let's see, it does a quarter inch round and a half inch round. So in other words, it does a a tight corner and a round corner, so whichever way you like. And I thought the, the the fatter corner would look better on this project because it matches the notebook. Okay. Now, I'm also going to cover this as well. Prep that. And I'm going all the way to the edge here. It's just going to give me a little extra oomph on my paper. Okay, got a little chunk there. I'm going to get that off. Sometimes you get these little dried pieces in there. You got to get rid of them. And a little piece of cardboard, too. Okay, flip that upside down, center it. Okay, I'm back. It's dry, and I want to put a coat of gesso on here. I'm using white Liquitex gesso, and this is going to give me a good surface to be able to paint on and put other medium on it. And you can see I still have my plastic in there between my cover and the first pages. Get me plenty there. Da -da 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 -da. And then when this is done, I'm going to set that to side to dry and work on something else. Okay. And I'm making sure that I'm getting around the edges of that raised little platform that I put in there. There we go. Okay, I have a stencil I want to use, and it's a Swirly Garden by the Crafters Workshop. There you can see what it looks like. I'm going to lay that across there, and I have some modeling paste, which is going to add some dimension to this. I have a metal one of these scrapers, and I cannot find it anywhere. Okay, so I'm just going to put some paste in there at random. Not going to cover the entire thing because I just want to get some dimension. And then also when I use modeling paste, I want to make sure that I rinse my tool off really quickly. So over here. Da, 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 da. It's kind of fun playing with this. You push it into the grooves and then just scrape off the excess. Feels like a child's craft. Oops. You could also color this. Um, I've done that before. Eee, there we go. Get all the way to the end on some of these edges there. And you can, I'm going to hold it down and lift it and see if I like what I'm seeing. Okay. I could do the whole thing, but I think I'm not going to. I'm just going to kind of, like I said, do it in random bits. Okay, I realize it's hard for you to see dimensions. So let's see if I can raise this up and get shadow on it. There you go. Okay, now that has to dry. Okay, now I'm gluing on these wood flourishes from Kaiser Craft. And um, I had actually ordered them online. And when they came, they were broken up. So 
I just took the pieces and rearranged them the way I wanted so that they're fitting kind of in the blank areas between all the um, raised areas that I did with that um, paste. So I only have one more to glue on. Um, many ways to glue them on. I'm using my E6000 because I do want a good hold and because it's still bumpy underneath where I'm working. I'm being very sparse with my application here. I don't want it just oozing out all over the place. There we go. And I know that there are some people who even use their uh, matte medium to apply things like that. Okay, and all I have to do is just put some pressure on here, even it out, and then I'm going to let that dry. Now I'm going to get these wood pieces covered in gesso as well so that they will take the um, paint medium that I'm going to use afterwards. So I'm not going to bore you with this. I will turn the camera off while I'm gessoing these pieces. Okay, everything's dry, and I want to just put some coat of different colors of paints here. I gathered a few colors that I like that are going to match some flowers that I have, and I'm just going to dig in. So this one is sort of a periwinkle color, and I see several of the colors here are colors that um not quite exactly the right color, so I'm going to kind of blend as I go. I should put something between these two layers here. So let's do that just to make sure I keep my page safe. There we go. Oh, I'm loving these two colors here. Um, so the other thing to remember about mixed media is you can always add on to it if you don't like what you're seeing. So I always get really nervous when I get to this stage here and I think I'm making a mistake. <laughs> So I'm going to go over this and look at it at different angles to make sure I'm getting all the way in the grooves there. Now I notice with this pink here, I didn't like either the colors of pink that I had, so I am going to be blending together um, a couple colors there. And I have a mister here to kind of keep this moist as I go. I think that's going to give me a little bit of help to, to prolong the color layout here. I love this periwinkle and purple side by side. Oh my, really loving that. Now I want to grab some of this pink, and like I said, it's I was not happy with the um, the color, so I'm going to try and blend these together a little bit here. One was almost too much too gray, and one was too pink, yeah, too hot pink. Let's try that and see where that gets us. So, and I'm not cleaning my brush in between. Uh, you'll notice because I want to get that blended look here. I hope I'm still in camera there. There we go. And I have some gold but it's mostly for accent and I think that I will be using that mostly when this dries. I think that's going to be where I'm going to be applying it but like I said um, I'm making this up as I go along so you will be seeing part of the process with me. <laughs> that's part of the, the joy of mixed media is discovering as you go now as this dries, I'm also going to be coming back in later and adding um, touches here and there that I think are needed. So you will be seeing this process as it comes about. Now I always make sure that my brushes aren't too expensive. Um, and I mean I do tend to get like from Hobby Lobby or I have gone to an art supply store in the past and I've just said, listen, I do mixed media and I'm not real um, careful with my brushes. So what's the best kind of brush to get? <laughs> and so I get that advice from them and then I don't worry too much about it. So I think I need some more of this periwinkles. I want to carry that over a little more than I did. I also have, which you probably can't see, but this middle section is white here because I wasn't sure if I was going to need it to tone down some of this and I still might. Like I said, we'll just see how this plays out as we go. Okay, I think when I look at this, I'm seeing too much pink for my taste, so I'm just going to come and bring this a little bit out there and mist that around. And I just want to kind of bring some of the periwinkle into that pink a little bit. A little less pink. Wipe some of that off. There we go, because I do want this to have more of a purple, lavender, um, 
color than just the pink there. I think it was dominating it a little too much. I think I might try a little bit of white up in this corner that I'm going to bring down into the rest here. Let's see how that does. There we go. Not too much, but I think I will use white as highlights later on. I think while it's damp, I might um, come in here and take some of the dark color and really accent around these swirls that I have. Let's see if I can bring that out just a little bit more. I might need even darker color yet around there. Kind of like a shading. This one is already pretty purple, pretty dark purple, so I'm thinking just around here. couple little accents here and there to bring that out. I might even be using a little black just to darken that up. Not sure yet. And I never am sure. That's why it's really hard for me, I think, to do a mixed media uh, with the camera rolling because it's something that I play around with for quite a while and before I'm really happy with it. And so I realize that the videos get a little long and, um, you know, you're just never sure where it's going to turn up how it's going to play out. You'll notice my shirt here. My husband and I went to a thrift store and I found him a dress shirt exactly in his size and um, I was so thrilled. It was like two dollars. It was brand new. Got it home and I didn't notice until after we got home that the reason it was at the thrift store is because it had some razor cuts right on the shoulder. Okay, this is, I don't like that. Anyway, so now it has become my paint shirt. So I wear it to keep my to keep myself a little clean while I'm painting. Okay, I think that's going to be good. But while it's still wet, I think I'm going to mist it a little bit with some pearl. And this is the Perfect Pearls Mists. Okay, I'm back, and um, it's not dry everywhere, but I think that at least on the very tops of these, they're dry, and that's what I want to work on now. I think I'm going to take some of these Perfect Pearl powders instead and just coat some of these to get some brilliancy out of there. Not thoroughly. You know, I want to do a hit and miss kind of thing, age the book a little bit, and go on my little swirlies here. I think it'll be a lot more subtle than just using gold paint. So, and I did pick out some flowers in my uh, stash that I want to work on to into the project, and I want to get these on there first. I may touch up later on and bring some more of this back in there. Get some of these areas in there as well. These raised areas, remember when I took that stencil on there? I just want to kind of bring out some of that right there. Okay. And I also have this one, which is Grape Fizz. Let's see how well that one responds. That's pretty. You're not going to be able to see this one too well, I think, on the camera. It's not as brilliant as the gold is, as far as making a difference. I could be brushing some of this on, but I really want to kind of grind it into the work, so to speak. So I'm really pushing it into there. Just again, getting some of those top surfaces up from the, when I use that um, paste on here in the mold, not the mold, but in the stencil. I want to pull out some of that work there. Let's see if we can get that shining in there. Wow, on camera, from what I'm seeing, it looks even more brilliant than it is, but it will wear off a little bit. I'm going to take a tissue to it. The next thing I did was I just pulled out some of my stash that I have little purple and clear embellishments and uh, flat back resin and jewels. Some flowers that I thought might work with this. I've got all over the place, Prima Flowers, Recollections, Spare Parts. So I was just picking out the ones that had some colors that I might want to use in there. E. So let me open these all up and pick out what I want. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of lay them around here and see what sort of patterns I come up with that I'm going to want to use. I think I usually tend to focus on one corner. Now normally, you'll recall, I don't usually um, embellish too much. 
I don't think this is the style I'm looking for. I don't usually embellish too much on covers because I like to have a flat surface when I open my book up to read. But in this case, I wanted to. That's why I made this really hard surface here. Okay, some stones there. I think we need... Mm -hmm. I like this, but I just somehow it's not speaking to me a whole lot right there. I think one up in the corner here and down there. And that. Now, um, you can use hot glue guns. You know I'm not a very big fan of hot glue guns, mostly because the embellishments will come off. They're not permanent. So um, what I like to do is um, use my E6000. I have a well-ventilated craft area, so I'm not too overly concerned about it, the smell from it. And what I like about E6000, besides the fact that it's permanent, is that it gives me a little time to play around and make adjustments. If I lay something in the wrong place, it's not where I want it. I have a little time to work with that and move it around instead of worrying that it's going to be stuck right away. Um, if you want to use the hot glue gun, you can, but if your cover is flexible, which mine is not, but if your cover is flexible, as you bend it, your embellishments can come off. And I want to plop this right there a little stone that I want to add there. And I have just some various um, embellishments here, rhinestones that I want to add in various places. And I noticed that probably one of the things <laughs> I'll end up doing is looking at this um, for a while and continually coming back and just adding something here and there. Now it's sticking to me. I'm going to get the excess off there. Put that one down in there. I usually use tweezers to do this, but since I'm in a hurry, I'm just going with the flow here. There we go. I have some flat back pearl ones too. Let me see if I think it might need one of those. Okay. Alrighty. So the other thing I'm thinking about, it, oops, glue is sticking to me. The other thing I'm thinking about is I have some trim that I might want to put along here. I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. So um, at the end of it. And so it's kind of a, it's a pearlized ivory color. I thought about using gold, but I think I like the antique look of this better. Now this is a little trickier because if I do this, I probably will use some hot glue to get that done because I need it to hold as I'm going around. So I'm going to pause. Okay, so I have my hot glue gun and it's all ready. I'm going to start here. I'm not going to do the, the oops, excuse me, do this around the back. I'm just going to do it the two sides and the, the top here. I want to get a little bit here going so I can anchor this. I have used hot glue in conjunction with glossy accents and that has worked okay for me too. I'm just going to do some sections a little at a time here and get it in there. You know the beauty of the hot glue is that it does grab quickly. So with the E6000 I've done embellishments like this before but I've found that I have to hold that for so long. And this way, I can get it adhered and let go of it right away. Okay. Yes, I'm liking the look of this a lot. Okay, and I'm just using enough to, I'm kind of smashing it into the corner so it's not oozing out all over the place. I don't want to see big blobs of glue everywhere when this project is done. And speaking when the project is done, I'm going to take some close-up shots of this and then I will have a photo gallery at the end of my video if you stick around for that. So thank you for watching the video, for giving me a thumbs up, and for subscribing to my channel. Um, I love all your input and I'm very happy to have you here. There we go. So my advice with mixed media is don't be afraid to get started because even if you're not happy with something, you can always, excuse the arm, you can always repaint it until you're happy with it. Okay, there we go. Smash that in right there. So that's the end product and I will take some close-up photos for you.